And those would be the phyla. Now within each phylum, there is subsequent diversification. But even there, I don't see the branches connecting that would make them a tree of life. As scientists, it's not our job to force the evidence into a theory that just doesn't fit it. And so I have absolutely no desire or reason to uphold Darwin's theory at this point. I think what we're seeing today is a series of scientific discoveries that are opening the eyes of more and more scientists to say, wait a minute, I can no longer believe that pure naturalistic processes can account for the origin and diversity of life. There must be something else here. The challenges to Darwinian theory have led more than 600 scientists with PhDs from major universities throughout the world to sign a document titled, A Scientific Descent from Darwinism. It reads in part, We are skeptical of the claims for the ability of random mutation and natural selection to account for the complexity of life. These are scientists with PhDs from Stanford and Berkeley and University of Chicago and Cambridge, major universities, who've looked hard and fast at the evidence and have walked away saying, I am not convinced. Maybe there's another explanation. Personally, the negative evidence forced me to conclude that Darwinism would require a blind leap of faith that I just had no good reason to make. Strobel's rejection of Darwinism and materialistic science was also based on the large body of positive evidence for intelligent design. Evidence he first confronted in the science of cosmology, which explores the origin of the universe. It. Is that healthy? Ah, what's the worst that could happen? I'm a tumor, I'm a tumor. I'm a tumor, I'm a tumor, I'm a tumor. I'm a tumor, I'm a tumor, I'm a tumor. Oh, 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 I'm a tumor. How did the universe begin? What is its source? Few questions have generated as much controversy through the centuries or inspired as many impassioned opinions. I interviewed William Lane Craig, a philosopher who has devoted much of his career to the study of cosmology.
and the question of origins. From ancient Greek materialism at the time of Plato and Aristotle up through 19th century idealism, the prevailing view was that the universe is eternal. that the universe never began to exist, that the universe as a whole is, as it were, a static, timeless entity. This belief in an eternal, unchanging universe, for centuries a pillar of Western cosmology, was unexpectedly challenged in 1915 by Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity. Einstein's equations implied a startling possibility. The cosmos was not static. but instead existed in a continual state of either contraction or expansion. Einstein did not like the idea that the universe was dynamic at all. In fact, like almost all scientists at the time, in the early 20th century, he assumed the universe was static and eternal. What's interesting and ironic is that he thought he had made some kind of mistake in his equations for the general theory of relativity. Uh, but a few years after he developed the theory, a Belgian astronomer named Lemaitre developed a model based upon his equations, which again predicted that the universe was in a continual state of expansion. In 1929, theoretical predictions were confirmed with empirical data. At the Mount Wilson Observatory overlooking Los Angeles, astronomer Edwin Hubble studied light from distant galaxies. Hubble determined that galaxies beyond our Milky Way were moving away from us at a speed proportional to their distance from the Earth. The more distant the galaxy, the faster it is receding. Hubble's landmark discovery led most astronomers and physicists, including Albert Einstein, to a similar conclusion. If the universe is continually expanding, then at earlier points in its history, it must have been smaller and denser. I think a good way to visualize this is to imagine that the history of the universe has somehow been photographed and made into a movie that we could play on a projector. As the projector runs forward, we watch the universe as it continually expands. But if the projector were to be stopped and were switched into reverse to make the movie run backward, then instead of watching the galaxies move farther and farther apart from each other, we'd see them draw closer and closer together. <laughs> 